Over the past couple of years, we've been so busy talking about a viral epidemic that we have neglected to talk about and possibly even forgotten the multiple epidemics of non-communicable diseases all across the globe in modern societies. Uh, turns out there is a single root cause for all of these epidemics of non-communicable diseases. And I'm gonna give you this list of diseases. You almost certainly suffer from at least one of these diseases or at least the root cause and you may not even be aware whatsoever. The average primary care doctor has no clue about what the root cause is of all these epidemics. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with over 20 years of clinical experience. And I've been watching these epidemics of seemingly unconnected non-communicable diseases for the last decade. And I've made it my mission, my professional life goal to reverse these epidemics and to help you reverse these epidemics in your life and in the life of your loved ones as well. Now, I'm gonna give you a long list of these different diseases that seem to be unrelated. Uh, they all, each one of them seems like its own particular thing, uh, probably not related to any of these other things, but the truth of the matter is they're all related. They're all caused by the same thing. So listen carefully to this list. And if you or someone you care about suffers from one of these conditions, then you almost certainly have the root cause condition that leads to all of these non-communicable diseases. The list includes high blood pressure, metabolic syndrome, obesity or morbid obesity, uh, immune system dysfunction, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes, type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, cardiovascular disease, plaque buildup, any of these heart conditions, uh, high triglycerides, visceral adiposity. So maybe you're thin on the outside, but you've got too much fat stored in your belly or in your liver or in your pancreas. Osteoporosis, yes. Thinning bones, brittle bones, absolutely linked to this. Blood clots, both large and small, occurring both in, in uh, visceral organs and out in the periphery. Gestational diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or metabolic associated fatty liver disease, Alzheimer's dementia and vascular dementia endothelial dysfunction, so the lining of your blood vessels is not performing properly, cardiomyopathies, cancer, multiple different cancers, and these currently we know that they include breast cancer, colon cancer, bladder cancer, pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, and prostatic cancer, and nephropathies or diseases of the kidney, including polycystic kidney disease, uh, obviously diabetic nephropathy and then multiple other nephropathies as well. Now that's a long list and I guarantee you either if you're over the age of 40 or you care about someone over the age of 40, somebody in your very close circle has one or more of these conditions. So there's a root cause for the vast majority of all of these non-communicable or uninfectious uh, chronic diseases, and here's what it is, here's how you can detect it, and here's how you can reverse it. So the root cause for the vast majority, not 100%, but the vast majority, 90, 95, 97% of the conditions that I listed above is hyperinsulinemia. Yeah. Now, so you're like, I've never heard of hyperinsulinemia. Uh, there is a very rare genetic uh, condition of hyperinsulinemia, but that's not what I'm talking about in this video. This video is talking about hyperinsulinemia that's self-inflicted. And you may be saying, wait, you're, you're saying, Dr. Barry, that I'm giving myself hyperinsulinemia? How could I possibly do that? Pay attention, you'll find out. And I'll also tell you, for no extra charge, how to reverse your hyperinsulinemia after you've learned how to detect it. So how do you have this? I mean, if this is a thing, how come my, my family doctor doesn't know about this? How come I haven't heard of this? So 
Family doctors, primary care doctors, even endocrinologists are very, very good at detecting hyperglycemia or high blood sugar or detecting prediabetes or type 2 diabetes by checking a hemoglobin A1C. And indeed, that's one of the tests that you need to have checked at least once a year if you're 40 years of age or older. And in many cases, if you're overweight or have any of these other conditions, you need to start checking your A1C probably in your early 30s. There's two other tests that the average doctor has no clue about. One of them is C-peptide, and the other is a fasting insulin. Now, there are several other ways that you can detect hyperinsulinemia, but these are the quickest, the easiest, and the cheapest three ways. If any one of these tests is even one-tenth of a point above normal, then you have some degree of hyperinsulinemia, and it's putting you at increased risk of all these other conditions that I talked about earlier. So I think every adult on the planet should have their hemoglobin A1C checked at least once a year if they're over the age of 30 and they have any of these other conditions that I talked about. Uh, if you're currently injecting insulin as a type 1 diabetic or as a type 2 diabetic, then checking a fasting insulin is not going to give you any information about the amount of insulin that your pancreas is having to secrete in order to try and maintain a normal blood sugar. So if you're injecting insulin of any kind, you'll have to have your C-peptide checked. If you're not on any injectable insulin, then you can safely check your fasting insulin level to see if you suffer from hyperinsulinemia. So if you have hyperinsulinemia, after you get these tests checked from your doctor, or if your doctor refuses to check them, you may have to check them through an independent lab like any lab test. Now, Quest and LabCorp have some standalone uh, labs that you can just go and say, hey, check this because my doctor refused. And there are also online lab companies like um, TrueHealthLabs.com where you can get these levels checked because you need to know this information even if your doctor refuses to check it for you. So now you need to know a simple and easy and inexpensive way to reverse this hyperinsulinemia if you indeed suffer from it. Uh, but first, let's talk about your immune system because, you know, we've been hearing all about this epidemic uh, caused by a virus for the last couple of years. Is it possible that we're starting to hear that, oh, if you suffer from hyperinsulinemia, you're much more likely to catch this virus and you're much more likely to have a bad outcome from this virus. And you've heard, oh yeah, if you're a type two diabetic, if you're overweight, if you have high blood pressure, if you have metabolic syndrome, well, all of these things come from hyperinsulinemia. So if you're worried about being infected by any virus, including the one that's been very popular to talk about over the last couple of years, then you want to reverse your hyperinsulinemia should you suffer from it. So how do you do that? When you eat a diet that is full of carbohydrates, and so maybe you're eating the, a popular plant-based diet that your doctor or your dietitian told you to eat that's full of lots of whole grains and full of fruit smoothies and full of impossible burgers, uh, you're, you're almost certainly giving yourself hyperinsulinemia. When you eat too many carbohydrates for your personal physiology, your pancreas is going to have to secrete much too much insulin in order to keep your blood sugar within normal limits and to push this glucose where it needs to go within your body. So when you're eating a high carbohydrate diet, you are asking for, you're praying for hyperinsulinemia. You see, human beings are by design low carbohydrate mammals. And regardless of what the popular dietary advice is, uh, which is namely a plant-based diet here in the last few years, even if that's popular, even if the preeminent authorities at the Harvard School of Public Health and at Tufts University and all these other uh, universities who are known for giving good nutrition advice, even if it's coming from there, if it causes your C-peptide and your fasting insulin to be elevated, in other words, if it gives you hyperinsulinemia, then it is increasing your risk for all of these conditions that I talked about earlier. I don't care where the advice is coming from. Telling a human being to eat a high carbohydrate diet is bad nutrition advice, and it's going to lead, by definition, to hyperinsulinemia, which is going to lead ultimately by definition, to all of these medical conditions that you're now aware of. 
So if you suffer from any of these, you have hyperinsulinemia. And the reason that you have that chronic non-communicable disease is from eating too many carbs and having hyperinsulinemia. I know, I know, this sounds a bit conspiratorial. It sounds a little bit too good to be true. But I'm telling you, I have multiple other videos on this channel that help, under, help you understand how many dermatological conditions come from hyperinsulinemia, many heart conditions, many liver conditions, many kidney conditions, even lung conditions and other conditions come from being chronically hyperinsulinemic. It's true. Uh, in, in the show notes of each of these videos, I've included the research that actually shows you what I'm talking about. It's not just my opinion. But when you go out on the internet and you get popular nutrition advice, they're going to tell you to eat lots of carbohydrates, lots of whole grain breads, and drink lots of fruit smoothies. The very advice that is going to lead to your hyperinsulinemia. So look at the research studies that I even posted on this video down in the show notes and realize that human beings are by design a low carbohydrate mammal. We cannot tolerate eating too many carbohydrates or we will become hyperinsulinemic and it will lead to these terrible, terrible non-communicable epidemics of disease that we indeed see all over the world today. You can reclaim the good health that you've lost by reclaiming a proper human diet and realizing that we are by design low carbohydrate mammals. So stop eating and drinking all those carbohydrates and you'll start to notice that all of these non-communicable diseases that you've been suffering from, that you thought were separate diseases, that you're taking one, two, three, five, ten pills a day and one or two injections a day or infusions once a month, all of that stuff is unnecessary when you start feeding your human body a proper human diet. Please help me get the information out to the millions, the hundreds of millions of people who are suffering from these chronic diseases by sharing this video. And if you'd like to ask me questions about your health and nutrition and medical regimen personally, become a patron on patreon.com. There's a link down in the show notes where you can ask me your questions directly. 